All right, hey guys. Um, today I actually have a purpose for a video, or well, I actually have something decent to make a video about. Yesterday it was basically just I don't even know what, just random stuff that I thought I might tell you guys and uh, why I did. If you read the uh, description of the video yesterday, as you can tell, I tried this hose thing and it didn't really work. That's just because I got the hose duct taped to here and the muffler. Because you see the oil was kind of spitting back. But what I figured out is if I cut the end of this hose like that, it just slides right on the muffler. Oh my god, that's focus, please. Thank you. Slides right on the end of, end of the muffler and it works very good. So I tried that right after I posted that video and it worked pretty good. I have oil on my hands. Um, so today's video is about air-cooled versus liquid-cooled motorcycles. Not going to be long. As you can tell, it's raining and it's quite dark. Guess we'll just go over here to the door real quick and look outside. Anyway, it's raining. It's pretty dark. Yeah. Uh, it gets dark way too early. Can't stand daylight savings time, but right now it's... Probably about 4.30, 4.45 in between there. Anyway, today is going to be, like I said, about air-cooled versus liquid-cooled motorcycles. First of all, or engines, not just motorcycles, but engines in general, more on the motorcycle topic. Um, I'll start out with introducing an air-cooled engine. This is an air-cooled engine. As you can see, the fins, hard to see. Never mind. That is an air-cooled engine. Just keep that in mind. But it has a cooling fan that runs off the engine. This is an air-cooled engine without a cooling fan. It has all these fins, which as you can see, the this head makes the engine get so hot it's ridiculous because there's not many fins. Because that's the regular head, and I just saw the stock one. I think I put it back in the drawer. That's, this is the stock head, which if I get another motorized bike kit like this, if this one blows up or something, I'm not, not putting the high compression one on because it's just not worth it. Plus you get more speed with lower. So, it has a lot more cooling fins. Then I'll just put that here. So, uh, how this works is with this kind of bike, you, you can, I guess, you can get bigger heads with a bunch of cooling fins. Similar to this one for my MX100 dirt bike that's sitting right here. Big cooling fins. Keeps it nice and cool. Just set that right there for now. Um, you can get bigger ones so you can cruise around slower, but with this kind of bike, you really want to keep that engine as cool as possible. Mostly in the summer. In the winter, you want to keep it fairly warm. Because Anyway, in the summer, you can keep it as cool as possible. And you just... You don't want to have it run hot because it, it's a two-stroke, it could damage the engine. Um, so basically, how it works is the wind coming this way. can't see it because my pipe's in the way. It goes through those fins, and those fins have heat on them. They're very, very hot. They come from the cylinder, and it like expels the heat throughout out through the wind. Aye. So if you ever notice, when you're riding one of these afterward, your carburetor will be very, very hot. Now, that's kind of a stupid place for the carburetor. Uh, without a heat shield or something, but... Uh, it'll be hot because as you're riding, especially if you're going faster, all of that heat coming through these will get caught up on that. will make it kind of warmish. Not mostly the carburetor, just the intake manifold gets fairly hot, I've noticed. But anyway, that's a air-cooled engine. It's simple. That's what the first dirt bikes were, air-cooled. They switched to liquid-cooled because they figured out with motocross that these engines run so, so, so hot. The air-cooled ones just kept blowing up, and they just wouldn't last very long. I shoved rags and paper down in there, so I wouldn't get anything in there. So uh, One of these days, probably bef maybe after the end of the year, which is in a month, I'll take in the cylinder for this thing to the motorcycle shop, see what's up with them. Uh, see what's wrong with it. So That's an air-cooled one. They switched to liquid-cooled, which is what this is. This is a newer bike. It smells like gas over here. 
Oh, never mind. It doesn't. I just have it on my coat, I think. But this is a liquid cooled engine. It has radiators just like a car. Radiators, you put coolant in it, or water, half water, half coolant, but just coolant. It's called coolant. I don't know what actually is in it. But you buy that and you fill up both of those. So you fill, fill it up through there, and there's two. There's another radiator on that side. And uh, there's a thing in this engine right here is a water pump. And it every, as you as the engine runs, that spins. Not quite as fast as the engine, but it spins. And what it does is... <clears throat> What that does is pumps water. I believe this bike, it goes this way from this thing over up. And that goes up to the radiator. So hose is right there. That goes up to the radiator and then there's two hoses. There's one up here and one on the bottom. That goes to the other radiator. And as it pushes it into that radiator, it'll suck it from the other one. And that that re that coolant will c go straight to the head right there. And it keeps it much, much cooler. Because, although you still need, it's still technically an air-cooled engine because the air cools the coolant through the radiators, which makes the coolant cool down the engine. It's hard concept to explain, but easy if you think about it. But anyway, that's what that does. So technically it's still an air-cooled engine, technically not because of that reason that it has water that's actually cooling down the engine. The air just cools the water, so I get that. Um, much more reliable because as long as you have air flowing through your radiators, your engine will always be cool unless you don't have coolant or water or whatever you're using in there. Um, you can use water, but not suggested. Oh, my neighbor and his stupid loud truck. Hate that guy. He'll, he'll get up and rev that at like 3 in the morning. It's just so loud. It's ridiculous. Uh, anyway, back to this. Oh, my God. Anyway, back to this thing. Um, you do have to replace the coolant. This needs to be replaced very, very badly. The bike is not warm, so I should be able to... This radiator cap's very sticky. I don't know why. I don't know, don't know why. Should be able to get it off with a screwy driver right here. Maybe. Okay, there we go. I think I got most of it. Yes. Okay. So this coolant is very dirty. You can't see down in there yet. But I will get a flashlight. You want to be able to see the see the bottom of the radiator, or at least these little finny things through there. See that? It's very hazy and it's very hard to see through. I can't see through it at all. And if you look at it close enough, which you guys can't, it will actually, you could see debris and crap floating in there. So I'll change that in the spring. I don't want to do it now because I don't want to go outside because it's cold and stuff like that. But I'll change that in the spring. Um, a lot of people I know use engine ice. It's a type of coolant for motorcycles. It's uh, 20 bucks for a half gallon, so it's, it's definitely not for the cheap people that always want to bargain. I think Prestone is what's in this right now because it just looks like it and that's like the only coolant brand that I know that works good with motorcycles as I can't get this cap back on. Okay, I'll do that after the video because it's a pain in the butt. Anyway, so that's what a liquid-cooled engine is. Uh, Air-cooled, older and simpler engines like that Chinesium, that engine over there, that Chinese engine over there, and this. This is air-cooled, but it has this cooling fan in front as the engine runs. That fan pushes air on these fins, so it's like a self-cooling engine, so I don't know. That's about all I have for this topic, really getting very dark outside and probably gonna go in because it's ridiculously cold out here um 
Yeah, I found out, found out a way to make this gas cap fit, fit. Stuck out this dumb little plastic sleeve that's usually in there that like helps you put the gas thing in quick. I feel like a quick release gas can. Now that stupidly poor designed red one with the so-called ripper gas cap fits in there, so. Um, yeah. So that's all I have on this subject. Uh, if you liked, like the video. Um, subscribe if you want to. Uh, the usual. So, uh, see you guys in the next video. Probably be like a few days or so. See you guys in the next video and, uh, yeah, so just see you then.